Hi everyone, um, welcome to Sports Replays. This is how I went this week. Got a score of 2,326. Not too bad, you know, slowly getting a bit better now. On the right track, went up almost 10,000 rankings this week. And a rank of 12,120, which is decent, okay, not the best, not the worst. Uh, there are a few things that I'm happy with this side and a few things I'm not. And there's a few things we should all should be concerned about. And we'll get into it right now. Um, so, I think Meg, so we'll start off with Jordan Dawson, 152, uh, which is outstanding stuff from Dawson. Uh, I'll put him on a VC just to you know take a bit of a sort of not a risk, but you know I had a feeling you know he's in good form and he did all right last, did it like ex outstanding last week with 176 against Fremantle. So I picked him as a VC and ended up being an excellent option. So happy with that that decision that helped me where to get me the, at least a decent score this round. So happy with Dawson. Phenomenal. Choosing him over Doherty has worked wonders. He's doing better in uh, Sicily. I think he's doing the best out of defenders. So look, he's, yeah, looks like D1 by a fair bit at the moment. Uh, moving on to Jordan Ridley. 91, yeah. Pretty much his ex season average, basically. Hasn't gone bananas, but hasn't been an absolute disaster. You probably want at least an average of 100 from him to make the pick worthwhile, or maybe even 105. Look, he's going to be my hold. He's going to be a hold for now. Uh, I've got bigger problems or things I want to do at the moment that I might make a really change later on. But if you can, can get the 90 and 100 for now, that's okay. Uh, unfortunately, I picked him over day costs or trading him over day costs, which is it's been a bit of a disaster at the moment compared to that. I wasn't expecting day cost to go off. I was expecting day cost to average about an 80 or 90. No, I didn't think he's going to be that good at this second season. He shouldn't be, to be honest. I want to talk about another player who's well overperformed my expectations. So day cost is one of them. I will be able to maintain it. I don't know. He might die, might slow down a bit later on in the year, which is sort of what I'm hoping here. I might be able to pick him at a cheaper price. But okay, he only scored 120 this week, so it's not a huge deal. But I am still reckon that's above the, above expectations for his second year. He should be performing this well. It's unhuman-like. You know, he shouldn't be this good at all, really. Uh, yeah, so that's another rant about him. About Dacosh, I should say. Moving on to Jimby, 51. Look, a little disappointing. Uh, with a couple of disappointing weeks in a row now from Jimby, and he look, he's probably not going to go up much more in value for the next coming weeks. He may even go down in value now. Uh, we need prob probably like another 80 or 90 to check the break evens, but just under 300k, we probably want a little bit more from him. Maybe at least a 350 to be get that to be able to at least get the 150k, you know, cash rise in total. You want to make a 150k profit. So look, we'll just have to wait and see with Jimby. You're probably going to have to hold him this week, depending on on the break evens. And I think there's one player who's probably going to be a trade out this week. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, McKenna, 55, a little disappointing from him. Can't have that on field, unfortunately. Him and Jimby performed below expectations. Oh, I forgive Jimby, I guess, because he's a young player. But McKenna, you want a little bit more. I know he's coming back to playing AFL, so he can't be extremely too harsh on, he, on McKenna. I guess he has had a couple of good weeks. Uh, Liam Jones, 88. Um, yeah, decent. That's what I want from Jones. An 88 score. He might have to be a hole for this week. I'll have to check his break-evens, but that 88 will help his cash gen for now and the coming weeks. Uh, Wilmot, 68. Okay, not terrible. Um, but look, probably want a little bit more ideally, but he's made, what, 120k? He might be a hold for this week by the looks of it. Lucky Cowan, 42. Maybe a tad disappointing. Probably want like a 60, 70 score just to keep that cash generation going. He's probably going to be a hold um, simply because I don't think his break even is going to be too high, but it's not going to be you know the best, I would say. He's probably going to be a hold. I reckon we might be able to get a little bit more out of him. And Charlie Constable is probably another problem with my defence at the moment. And he's just, yeah, six, he's just, uh, he's an average of 61.5. Stuart Jew's not going to play him. Gold Coast have another loss. Uh, is he going to play him? I don't know. It's just frustrating because this is where you want, you know, your rookies to be playing at this time of year. You want them to make as much money as possible. Right now, so you'll be able to have enough money 
to be a downgrade to another rookie to bring in better players into the team. And look, that's probably one of the most frustrating parts. You know, super coach, he performs okay the first two rounds and play for the rest of the season or a good proportion of the season where you need to be playing. I hope he plays next week because it's one of those situations where you need as much cash generation early on at this time of year or of or, or the season, I should say. So we'll have to wait and see. As for the defence, well, yeah, this, you know, have four players scored under 100 for the defence and four players scored under 70, or three players scored under 70 on field, which is a bit disappointing and I can't really, ha- can't really have that. So we're going to have to trade one of these players, I think, this week. Maybe look, look towards the Sicily because he's underperformed this season and I'm going to have to bring him in at some point I reckon. I'll have to bring in some premium this week. I'm probably going to have to do the upgrade or boost this week. I know DPP comes in next week I believe with round 6 coming in. Um, or is it this week? I'm not too sure but in the coming weeks it will be a DPP option and we're going to have to see if there's any you know Top six defenders or top six forwards that come into play from that. Uh, but now onto the midfield, we've got Clayton Oliver, 115, a little disappointing. Glad I didn't pick him as a captain option. Well, I switched the option around. Uh, and yeah, and I'm glad I didn't VC him either. So, look, a little disappointing from Oliver if he has him captain. Uh, but look, he should bounce back. He performed poor in the first quarter, but did all right for the next three. Melbourne disappointing for pretty much the whole game. They got a few what junk time goals, to, but they were overall beaten for majority of the game. And look, Oliver 115 is okay. It could have been a lot lower as well, considering his stuff. But he's a fighter, Oliver, and that's the reason why we have him in his side and our sides. Uh, by Marcus Bontepelli, 145. That's you know a great job from Bontepelli. He had a great first three quarters and didn't do much in the last quarter and probably end up costing, what, Bulldogs a game. I don't know what Bev, Beveridge was doing because Bontepelli was looking like getting a 170-180 score at one point and just, you know, Luke Beveridge decides, nah, let's not play the you know best player on ground. You know, that's just silly. Silly for um, Beveridge and also having English off the field as well. So that's all right for me because I don't have him, but in terms of super coach for a Bulldogs, you know, Point of view, that's just silly. What beverage? You, why would you take your two best players off field or two your best players this season off field in your cr- close game? I understand if you up by five goals with five minutes left or you got the game won, but it was on the line. It was just silly. Uh, moving on to Luke Davies Uniac, a disappointing score of 90. And look, they got smashed basically for three quarters, North Melbourne. And uh, I wasn't expecting a huge score from. LDU this week failed to break 100, which is disappointing. At least get 100 for that price point. And now it's like, uh, should I, do I regret buying, picking me up? I'm not too sure. Trading him in, I should say. Do I regret it? I'm not too sure yet. Now, wait until North maybe has an easier game, an easier opponent, and it might be a, he might be able to dominate a bit more like he did the first two weeks. So this sort of looks like not a failed selection. He hasn't, done any absolute, hasn't been an absolute disaster, but... We'll just give it more time. Uh, Tom Green, 97. It looked maybe a little disappointing. Below his season average. I mean, GWS did win, but he did he butcher the ball a little bit as well. And it wasn't particularly, you know, his best performance. But a lot, everyone has Tom Green, so it's not a huge deal. Will Setterfield, 91. A little disappointing, I guess. Did go up, in, go up in price. But it's just going to be a short term and I'm not too sure he's a, is he a player we have to move on I'm going to have to hold him for now because I want to get the rookies off field as quick as possible that's the ideal scenario at the moment and then if have trades left over money left over then bring Setterfield to you know your uber premium or your top top players which I'll probably do hopefully you know in a couple months time or a month's week month's time I can get rid of some of these you know what semi premiums or fake premium, premiums off field uh, Jacob Hopper, bounced back with 115, and that's what we want from him. Uh, he was sort of a bit uh, bit hesitant, but he brings another good score to keep his cash generation going, and he'll be a definitely hold for this week. Also, James Warple, 100, which is great because it was one of the, he had a couple of poor weeks, and he was looking to you know drop value this week, but having a 100 score is going to you know maintain his price rise and hopefully lower his break even for now. 
He's going to be hold for now. He was a player who's going to look to trade out this week, but it'll be a player that I'll talk about in a minute. We will probably have to trade out. Will Ashcroft, 72, an average score. Um, is he a player going to trade out? Probably not. He's probably a hold. Um, considering Brisbane did dominate, you were hoping Ashcroft could get a 90 or 100 score. Look, we'll just have to wait and see with Ashcroft. I need to check his break even. I don't think it's going to be too high. He's most likely going to be a hold. He could be a trade out too. We'll have to wait and see on that. It depends on what other selections I have available this week. But he's going to be a hold. And now Cam McKenzie, probably the disappointment I have for the round, to be honest, in terms of super coach, even though he wasn't on field. Uh, he scored a 14 and he was only playing like a quarter. He was only like, was a sub and we can't have that. He is either not playing or he's playing the four quarters. That's just what it is. And he has to be a trade out. He actually lost money. So you're better off trading him off last week. So look, we'll have to wait and see well, who's on the bubble, which rookies are going to come in the midfield. Have to get rid of him, unfortunately. He's going to have a too high break even. And it's just disappointing because, you know, he could have you know generate, generated us a bit more cash. Maybe up to a 300, 350 score, but it's just been a disappointment now with this selection. And, uh, and I guess, you know, that's what you're going to get with young players, and particularly if they were after a smashing the other week. They were better against Hawthorne, but, you know, to take into consideration, GDOS aren't, you know, the best side, and really they should have lost by four or five goals, you know, at least against Essendon Carlton. So, look, yeah. But Kenzie, he's probably going to have to go, I reckon, this week. As long with maybe a Baker. 53 is not quite good enough. I'll have to check his break even as well. But he's probably going to have to be, uh, you know, either trade out this week or trade out next week, depending how many trades I've... I've only probably only got three trades. It might be a next week. Which is looking more likely. No along. 55. Okay. You know, he's still going to generate cash maybe for this. Well, definitely for this week. I'm not too sure about the next week. Maybe, yeah, look, hold him. He's been good. Moving on to the rucks here, we've got Sean Darcy, 136, which is outstanding considering he had a you know, mediocre first two weeks or terrible second round, mediocre first week, but he's bounced back and punished people who were trading him and that's what exactly what I wanted and it's really helped me. Those people who traded Darcy Cameron and Wits to be you know, thinking, oh, why did I do that? And training Darcy, it looks like silly dissolution at that point. But we, it's one of those things with super coach. You trade out a player and he punishes you. I'm glad I hold him because I think, oh, I reckon he might bounce back. And he sure has, Sean Darcy. He's just performed well. as one of the reasons why Fremantle won. And look, he's done well the last three weeks. And he's, yeah, it's been been a good job. It's been a smart decision holding on to him. Do I reckon he can continue this form? Look, I'm expecting him to have a poor game now and then. Just not like a 40 or 50 as a score. That's not what we want from its premium. But look, holding on to him has been a good idea. He's actually got a high average in Marshall. We did all right this week, but you've got... Collingwood have got no rucks. So, with Marshall, it's one of those selections. Should I train him up to an English? Uh, which is probably might be the best solution at the moment, but that's not the biggest concern of this side. So we'll just have to hold Marshall now. It's good that he got a decent score. He's happy for a bit more since you're playing in Collingwood. But I guess Collingwood did dominate the midfield. It was really the forward line that sort of let Collingwood down as they had a significantly more inside 50s than what St Kilda did, or a fair bit more. Probably should have won by a little bit more. Um, St Kilda did get a couple of goals towards the end. So look, yeah, hold Marshall for now after that. And Radigalier has done it again with the sc- decent score again with 88. So look, happy with his last two rounds. It's sort of, you know, he's going to generate a f- decent amount of cash now, more than what I was expecting now. He was poor for the first few weeks, but now he's, you know, had a couple of good games and it's really going to help the cash generation. Uh, so when a ruck rookie comes in, I could probably trade him out and bring some, get that extra cash to help my side in other areas. That's what I'm looking to do. We're just having a good emergency option. So look, looking like a start, starting him is looking like a good idea at the moment or a smart option. Or a good selection is a better way of saying it. So moving on to the forward line, we've got Josh Jankley, 130. He finally performs well. He's been a dis- disappointing the last couple of couple rounds or the start of the season he's had so far. And he's bounced back with a nice 133. So it just, you know, eases people's, everyone's concern on him. 
Team Torano, 115, decent score from him. Not, you know, huge score, and I think that's what Torano is. He's not going to give you that you know, those massive scores, but he's not going to, you know, get you a terrible score. It's fairly consistent, which is what we want, but you want that, you know, huge score, and an average of 107, just uh, for the price that we paid for him at the start. And look, it's just a selection we go, uh, average, you know. He's going to probably do a bit better this season in terms of his average compared to last couple of seasons. But look, we probably want a bit more from him. But everyone has him, so it doesn't really matter, does it? As long as he get injured. Cotter Rosie, 93, a little disappointing. And this selection's been a bit did a little disappointing. Everyone's going on about Cotter Rosie, and I thought, oh, should I pick him? Because if he does go off, it's going to be. You know, it's going to look bad. You know, it's going to kill me like Nick Dacos and Nick Team English. But unlike, you know, Dacos and English, Rosie hasn't gone off. And there's been other forwards who've probably had, who've had scored him, like Jeremy Cameron. But, you know, Jeremy Cameron can get like a score of 40 or 50. He's probably carried along uh, this season a little bit. Jeremy Cameron, Cameron's been the, probably their best player. So, look, Rosie, 93. We'll just have to accept it. Everyone has Rosie, and we're just, yeah, I'm not too sure if he's going to be in the top five forwards. Yeah, he might be, he'll be still around the mark, but it's sort of clear cut now. Uh, Errol Gooden, 88, is probably arguably one of the more disappointing on field performances this week, considering, you know, I didn't do particularly extremely well, did all right, but look, 88, you know, uh, average. Not the best, not the worst. Probably a little disappointing. You know, even though Sydney you know, won the game easily in the end. Um, Richmond died off in the last, what, 15 minutes. Which probably didn't really represent the game. It was fairly, you know, pretty close the whole game. But the majority of it, and look, Sydney pulled away. 88 from Gooden. Okay, move on. Uh, Sheasel, 100. And this is probably the most surprising you know, selection, like in terms of performance, he's overperformed by more than probably any other player I was, you know, in the super coach or just in general. And like the day cost, I wasn't expecting this. You know, he shouldn't be this good for his first year. And he's averaging, what, 111? <laughs> or just done, or well, almost 112, really. I mean, that's just phenomenal, you know, for a first year player. And he's, look, he's, he's the highest averaging forward. <laughs> Who would have thought of that? <laughs> a rookie player, a first year player, have, having the highest averaging forward in my side. I wouldn't have thought about that. I think he's the highest averaging forward overall. I need to check that, but he's definitely up there. And he's high average in Dunkley. <laughs> Unbelievable. So look, happy with Sheasel. He's probably at the moment. He's definitely staying in the side. There's no, no question about that. Will he be able to maintain that for the whole season? And look, he got, he got a decent score in Melbourne. Got North Melbourne got smashed, so... Look, yeah, who knows? Uh, Davey didn't play. Luke Tolley with Chandler. 56 from Chandler. That's okay. Scored more than Ro- J- his teammate in J. Van Roden, you know, who are brought in this week for cash generation. And that's looking to be like an okay so to trade in there. So in terms of overall, look, better week, decent score. We've gone up in the ranks, heading in the right direction. Probably a little bit behind on what I want. Ideally, want to be in the top 10k uh, by the end of this round. But look, it's a long season, and I reckon I'll hopefully be in the top 10k in the next couple of weeks, and we could slowly move up from there. In terms of trades this week, I'm unsure. I need to check the the break evens and are the price points. I'm thinking maybe ring a Sicily in defence since that's the weakest. Because since that's the weakest line at the moment on my side, I'm not in the at least happiest where it is at. A few of the midfielders may need to move on soon. I think set a field. I was hoping he'll score a bit more since Essen did perform well. We, or as a team, we did pretty well. No player really stood out, particularly, which is great. You know, which is what you want from a side. And to beat, you know, which was a premiership favourites is phenomenal. And I reckon we might make the eight or be around it now. At least for the time being, it is a long season. We could fade out a little bit. But I reckon we should hopefully be around the 8 of around that mark. Uh, look, look, decent round overall. Fairly happy. 
maybe could have done a little bit better. I've seen a few sides getting 2,400. And I think some people had Lockie Neal, who was underperformed again this season, but performed one big, massive score, which would probably, you know, had people had a bit of question marks. Is Dunkley going to affect his score a bit, scoring a bit? And it probably did affect Dunkley and Neal's score a little bit, but they both performed well. Not too sure if they're going to do that every week. They won't do it every week, but look, happy with this score. Could be a bit better, but at least I'm heading in the right direction. Like and subscribe if you want more. Thank you for watching.